One of the best quotes I've heard is to get the best results, you need a great plan and not quite enough time to achieve it. I'm not sure who originally said that, but in the case of Tula Pink's anchor quilt, it couldn't have been more true. Hey, I'm Angela Walters, and in this video, I'm giving you a peek into my quilting process as I work on a quilt for fabric designer extraordinaire Tula Pink. She is known for her amazing fabrics, and I've been privileged to be her friend and also her machine quilter. Over the last 10 years, I've quilted all her market quilts and each one has been amazing. But when I was quilting this quilt, it was just a teeny bit more stressful. Due to a delay in fabric production, she didn't get her fabric till right before quilt market. So she hurried up, pieced the top, brought it to me, and gave me all weekend to quilt it. But here's a spoiler alert, I did get it finished in time. The quilt top she brought me was her Anchors Away quilt pattern featuring her latest fabric collection, Zuma. And even on the time crunch, she still found time to fussy cut all those little bitty blocks. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I used a traditional quilting design and gave it a modern twist. We'll get our swirl on with the swirl chain quilting design, and then I'll give you my secrets for highlighting or hiding quilting designs. So let's get started. Normally, we use two layers of polyester batting on her quilts, but this time we decided to try out wool batting to see what kind of look it would give us. After I've laid out the top, it's time to stabilize the sides. I'm using my ruler to help me quilt a straight line as close to the edge of the quilt as I can. This will help prevent the quilting from sucking in the sides of the fabric and keep it square, which is very important, especially with all the quilting I'm gonna to add to it. But this batting is pretty puffy, so I'm gonna use a serpentine line at this point to help hold that fabric in place. Once the quilt's stabilized, it's time to do the fun quilting. I've known that this quilt has been coming for a while now, so I've been brainstorming quilting options. And of course, I had to go with the most obvious. What does an anchor need? a rope to connect it to the boat, of course. I'm gonna quilt the rope design. It's a traditional design, but I'm gonna give it a modern twist by making it look like it's wrapping in front of and behind of the anchor. What can I say? I'm easily amused and I think this is gonna look awesome. Since there's so much background area to this quilt, I'm gonna use guidelines to help me ensure that the rope goes kind of where I want it to go. Now these lines that I'm marking, they're just a guideline. My design doesn't have to fall exactly on it. It's kind of like a suggestion, like a speed limit sign. Okay, well we know that's not a suggestion, but these lines are. They're merely a way for me to visualize where that rope's gonna go, no matter where I am on the quilt. This is a design that I don't quilt very often, so I'm gonna mark out the first couple of sections to help me get into the groove of things, and then once it clicks, then I can quilt it without marking it. I'm gonna start with a line that curves out, angled down towards the other side of my line, ending in an arc. From that point, I'm gonna quilt the end of my next rope, then I'm going to backtrack and quilt that same shape until it runs into the other side of my rope. Then you'll travel and do the same thing again. Make that curve shape, but you really wanna make these touch right here and then end in a curve like that. I'm just gonna keep repeating, quilting that same shape, traveling, and trying to fit it in between those lines as much as possible. Since I have a lot of background space and this anchor is big and beautiful, I'm gonna quilt my rope a little wider, about four to five inches wide. I want it to really be an element that's noticeable on the quilt and I want it to take up as much room as possible so that I can get this quilt done faster. Quilting the rope this big will also help it stand out from all the dense filler that I'm getting ready to put around it. I'm not quilting the whole rope right now. I'm just gonna quilt down as far as my machine will let me, and then it's time to echo back. I always say that echoing is your best quilting friend. Echoing in this instance is gonna help separate that rope from the filler so that it stands out. I mean, if I'm taking all the time to quilt this rope, I kinda want it to be noticeable. Just a little bit of stitching in the ditch on the top of my anchor, and then I'll be ready for the rest of the filler. So I'm gonna use the swirl chain design. I like to say that this design is like a party trick. Once you get the hang of it, it looks so complicated and so difficult, it's actually pretty easy. I'm basically quilting the same shape over and over again. The trick is, though, I'm adding lots of echoing to build it up. I'm quilting a nice elongated swirl. Then I'm going to echo, echo, echo. Most of this design is just echoing. This is gonna help build up that swirl chain and make it look so nice and elegant. In between the swirls, I might throw in a paisley here and there, or I might echo what I previously quilted to build up that shape. Once that one's done, I'm gonna quilt another swirl that extends out in front of it. It's gonna face the opposite direction, and then I'm going to echo, echo, 
echo again. So I'm gonna quilt my swirls in a row or a chain and I'm gonna kind of have them somewhat follow the shape of the rope. It's just gonna be a subtle nod to the way that rope is moving. It's time to do the same thing on the other side. Well, now I have a rope and I have a swirl chain. It's time to put some filler in around them. A filler design is simply a quilting design that you're gonna put around an element. But what you put around it is gonna help highlight or hide it. If I quilted my swirl chain and I think, mmm, not looking so good, or maybe I don't want it to be such a strong element to the quilt, I'm gonna put something similar around it. Smaller swirls that go in all different directions and have the same exact spacing as the swirl chain will help it blend in. The whole idea is the more texture I have right there, the less my eye is gonna be able to pick up on any individual element. It's all just gonna kind of blend together. Or I could put it this way, if you make a mistake, just add more mistakes around it until it goes away. Now, it does work in quilting, just not in any other area of life like finances or relationships or anything like that, but definitely with quilting designs. I love the way these swirls are looking, but I think the quilt should look more ocean-like. So I think on the other side of my swirls, I'm gonna go to a wavy line design. It'll add movement to the quilt and help that swirl chain stand out a little bit more. And because I've never been good at sticking with just one quilting design, I'm gonna combine some ribbon candy and pebbles with the wavy lines. I think it just adds these awesome little pops of texture. I'm really happy with how this is going. The most important thing with any filler that you put around an element is that you just quilt the whole area. I think people will notice a gap in the quilting before they notice a mistake, so as long as you fill it in, it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna continue quilting those wavy lines with that pop of texture in between my swirl chain and the rope. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Since I'm quilting the swirl as I go and not all at once, that means I'm gonna use the filler to get to the end of the swirl and then build off of it. Switching between the filler and the swirl chain allows me to quilt so efficiently. Plus, it's a lot of fun. Once I filled in that whole area and I've advanced down the quilt, it's time to add my next section of my rope using my water soluble marker. I've already told you I wanna make it look like it wraps around that anchor. So once I hit the edge of that seam, I'm gonna use traveling to make it look as though the design goes behind that part. So for right this moment, I'm gonna to try to ignore the quilt top and just quilt the rope within the lines. Do the same thing I've done up to this point. Going until I run into the edge of the piecing on the other side. Once I reach that seam, I'm gonna travel along the edge and then continue the design. This little trick is what's going to make the rope look like it's going behind this part of the anchor. And I'm going to keep repeating as I work my way down the quilt. Marking out the area that I want to quilt the rope, and then quilting it so that it looks like it's wrapping in front of and behind of the anchor. And then of course, filling it in with those wavy lines with a pop of texture. You might think that using so many different designs could overwhelm the beautiful patchwork of the quilt. But using a thread color that blends into the back prevents that from happening. The result is beautiful textured quilting with a lot of different designs. This is only the first video of a two-part series. In a future video, I'm gonna show you how I picked the perfect design for the patchwork, and I'll tell you my true feelings about machine quilting pebbles. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss when that comes out. And if you've been wanting to tackle that rope design, you wanna make that beautiful anchor quilt, I put together some free downloadable quilting diagrams that will show you exactly how to do that. There's a link to all that in the description box below, as well as where you can find more of this Tula Pink Zuma fabric and the Anchors Away quilt kit and free pattern. So I'll see you soon when we finally finish this Anchors Away quilt. Happy quilting.